blank and free verse. In this episode, we dispel the myth of blank and free verse being one and the same. You get to watch me try to wiggle out of a corner I've backed myself into. And we're reminded not to be naive because nothing in this world is free. Formerly known as heroic verse, a blank verse is a metered composition that does not rhyme. More often than not, they are written in iambic pentameter. But there are such poems written in anapes, trochee, and dactyl blank verse. If you're unfamiliar with those terms, be sure to check out our previous episode. In the English language, there are six different types of feet we utilize. Iam, anapes, trochee, dactyl, spondy, and pyrrhic. A blank verse may not rhyme, but it got rhythm. Blank verse knows rhythm. Okay, here are two examples. First, an excerpt from Macbeth by William Shakespeare. This is written in iambic pentameter blank verse. Five iams per meter with no rhyme. Our second example is an excerpt from the poem Sunday Morning by Wallace Stevens. Same thing, iambic pentameter blank verse. Five iams per meter with no rhyme. Next, we're going to discuss what is arguably modern times most often utilized form of poetry in the United States, the free verse. It is a literary device which is free from the normal structures of a poem, and by that I specifically mean rhythm. This may get a little messy, considering how much we've said, poems come in all shapes and sizes, and they must have rhythm. We spoke about that before. So the only trait each dictionary feels is important to mention in its definition of poetry is rhythm. And again, if you've watched another one of our previous episodes, prose come in many sizes, and they don't need rhythm. You might be asking, isn't free verse just a glorified prose then? To you good sir and madame, I say nay. First, free verse has line breaks, irregular pauses in its speech. Second, it is not all that free from the rules of poetry, which we spoke about. Poetry is a written and oral tradition composed of rhythmical words describing an experience or something of one's imagination in a way deemed beautiful and more concentrated than ordinary speech. It still needs to be driven by heightened imagery, have a more concentrated language, and emotional effects. Also, free verse does not rhyme within any fixed form. It can rhyme, but not within a fixed pattern. To clear up some confusion, if you write a poem with a pattern never seen before, it is not a free verse. You've simply created a unique pattern, to which I say, congratulations. Share it with us in the comments section and who knows, your style one day may get defined. Two examples of a free verse. First, an excerpt from Charles Wright's poem, Snow. If you notice, there's no fixed rhythmical pattern in the poem. Next, an excerpt from Miguel Agrin's poem, High Winding Beehive, Guyana. Again, the same thing no fixed rhythmical meter, and it doesn't rhyme, but the imagery is heightened and the language is concentrated. All you Walt Whitman and Emily Dickinson fans, don't kill me, we'll be sure to return to this topic when we discuss the history of American poetry in a later episode. Last thing I'd like to leave you with is one of my favorite quotes ever. It comes from Edmund Clarence Stedman, who expanded upon John Gabriel Stedman's original quote. Poetry is an art and chief of the fine art, the easiest to dabble in, the hardest in which to reach true excellence. I share this because those of you who have been watching this series from the beginning may feel we're just covering the basics, and it is true, we are, for now. Whether it is us behind the production of Poetry Defined, or you watching our videos, we are aspiring to reach true excellence in our craft. A strong foundation must be set, and if I can be honest, personally, I'm enjoying this time of going over the basics again. In our following episode, we're going to get into alliteration and rhyming. After that, we get into the initial video of a series within this series, Rituals, where we'll be sharing prompts and healthy practices for writing. Though, I'd like to divulge one healthy practice right now, Share Poetry Defined. We're on a journey here, and sharing it with a few of your buddies makes the trip more worthwhile. As always, thank you for watching Poetry Defined. Foot is a basic unit of measurement of a meter. It is the pattern of stressed and unstressed syllables. 
or accented and unaccented vowels appear within identical consonant pairs. This can be seen in the words block and black, rod and red, hall and